Hello and welcome. I'm going to do a walkthrough today of the quarterfinals case from the FMWC Brazil, which happened uh, this last weekend. Um, I have had a look at this before, so this is not a live attempt, uh, but that's what it is. Uh, so there are seven, no bonuses in this one, and seven levels. There's like one mini one for 50 points, and then six bigger ones for 200 points, and they're all sort of inspired by, um, inspired by other by cases from like the main uh, MEWC competition. So there's one based on sommelier, one based on fantasy Excel, one based on elections are coming, one based on the social network, one based on Lana Manana, one based on Dicey Battle, and one based on passing notes, uh, which is an excellent group of cases to draw inspiration from. Except Dicey Battle is terrifying, but the Dicey Battle question here is not as terrifying. So anyway, uh, enough waffle. I'm going to dive on in. So sommelier... So for this level, we have to consult the sheet N1 sommelier. There we have a list of wines and six, five, six, five, oh, sorry, and their five attributes, which are whatever they are. <clears throat> Something every wine values, different values for every attribute. We're interested in the media, which I assume is average, but it's not inconceivable that it's median. So let's just pull out the old translate to make sure of that. Uh, uh, I, don't know. I don't really want to translate the whole thing, but just want a bit. Uh, never mind, I'll just translate the whole thing. I'm trying to be too purist for my own good. Uh, okay, so. Uh, yes, average. Okay, good. <clears throat> uh, so the objective is to find which wine has an average of the attributes that's closest to the average requested. Okay. So, <clears throat> uh, I mean, I guess the easiest way to do it is, no, you know, I'm, I'm in a, I'm in a, single cell purity kick at the moment so we're going to go by row by a row Blah. my autocomplete is just like on a half a second lag at the moment it is killing me anyway by row that uh well yeah let's do average and yeah, we we'll do that minus this thing uh g42 then we're going to take the absolute value of that <clears throat> and we want the one that is closest to zero in absolute values. So we're going to X look up zero in that list of absolute values, returning from the list of wine names. <clears throat> and for our match mode, we want exact match or next larger item. I think that's it. Yeah, that seems to be working. So just expand that, grab this. Question is worth like one twenty-fifth of the point. So actually, I think I went pretty slow on that one relative to the value. But never mind. Okay. So this one is based on Fantasy Excel, and we're going to reference the sheet Fantasy Excel. Okay. With you so far. Uh, in that sheet, we have a table with names and numbers of participants, and their points across sixteen weeks. The points of the week are formed. Pella, I don't know what Pella is, sum of the three parts. So, 5, 639, 8. <clears throat> oh, we're just adding them up. Okay, well, that's simpler than the original. <clears throat> okay, uh, first we have to sum the points of participant 1 of all the weeks, then the points of participant 2, and we want the, the absolute difference between the two. Okay, <clears throat> so... We've got a range of weeks, so I'm just going to start I'm going to start by text splitting this uh, by that and multiply by one to give me my starting and ending week. <clears throat> so then I want a sequence of this minus this plus one, starting from here. So 11, 12, 13, 14, yes. Uh, and then I want to X match this against the list of names. And then I just want to index on the two of those. So we're going to index on this whole mess with 
that list of numbers being the, oh, sorry, no, that list of numbers is the columns, and the other list of numbers is the rows. Uh, so we'll come back here and get it. Just point to that for now. But that's obviously not the right way to do it, because I need to take it from here. <coughs> and put it in here. Uh, what? What are you talking about? Yeah, there it is, right there. Okay, I'm a little confused with what's going on there. Let's see. Uh, so we have to match those. We get 22 and 17, and we're pointing at... Ah, okay, for some reason I seem to have started in row 18 with my reference instead of row 2. So that's not smart. Let's start in row 2. <clears throat> okay. Uh, and then I'm interested in just summing all the numbers for each player, which <clears throat> will be the whole column. So we can just wrap this in a by call uh, of that and that and concat. That gives me a string of numbers for each of them. Uh, and then I guess Do a little bit more than that. I can say um, I can say lambda call, uh, and what I'm interested in is summing something, and I'm going to text split to get all the different pieces. Uh, but first, I have to text join on that. So I'm going to text join all of the column. I'm going to text split it on the same delimiter. Uh, I'm going to multiply that by one, turn on its numbers, and sum them all up. And that gives me that, 2, 4, 2, 6, 4, 6, oh, no, I'm looking for much smaller numbers. So, I'm looking for 1, 3, 2, oh, sorry, yes, I do remember this. Uh, so, it says 11, 14, but what that means is after 11 and before 14, so we're only interested in two weeks. So that's fine. I just need to take, instead of this being plus one, it should be minus one. And we're going to start at that plus one. And then I get 1328 and 1832, which is exactly what I want. Multiply that by uh, one minus one to get the uh, difference and sum. And then finally, I need the absolute value of that. And I will say the <laughs> autocomplete is key. Killing me. Uh, I will say that if I ever wanted to use this formula again, uh, I would write it in more steps than this, uh, or like write it out properly as a let. But when you're building something up as you go, it's perfectly easy to understand the layers you're adding on. If I went back to read this later, the fact that it's the logic is built from the inside out instead of in steps would make it much harder. But Whatever, we got half an hour. Okay, elections are coming. Oh, yeah, we got a color. Ah, fine. Um, all right, so I'm going to select this range. So we've got to color code all these things. Do, do, do. You know what? I'm not going to make you watch me do this by hand. I'm going to grab my uh, eSports macros, uh, enable macros, and I'm going to... Oh, no, I can't do my color trick on this because it's got these blended colors. All right, so let's just do... Actually, no, wait, hang on. I think I think I fixed my color thing to allow for that. Did I? I don't completely remember. Let's see. Uh-oh. Oh, it's stuck in a loop, which maybe means it can't handle those at all. <laughs> okay. Uh, well, never mind. So we'll just have to do the two that are weird like that. So I'm just going to... Uh, well, actually... Control H. So we want to find by format. I'm going to replace... I'll just replace that first one with two and format, choose format from cell, and this guy, and then I want to select the range. Uh, and then Alt A, no, sorry, select back in here and then Alt A, replace them all, done. Good, and then let me just give this a name because I'll. When you have to do a bunch of replacements like this, it does get very annoying that uh, every time you go to pick the format from a new cell, 
it selects that cell and you lose the focus of the range. So that's, that's why I have this oats range selected. And now that one was number four, I think. So replace four. And then the others, so the yellow is one. So they should all be filled in now. And it looks like they are, yes. Uh, so now I can clear format. Uh, so I'm going to replace that with a one. And then the purple is number three. And then whatever's in the black is number five, which is zero. Uh, <clears throat> okay. So now, what do we actually have to do R89? So this so level we have to discover the results of the election between five parties. Everyone is going to appear multiple times in the questions below and is represented by the colors. Yes, that I know, uh, in every one of the hundred turns, uh, still represent. I think that's just saying that it'll be represented by the color of the format or something. The winning party of the election is the one that has the biggest number of, of consecutive victories during the hundred turns, right? Mm. And that should be represented as riposta, as this, I guess, the symbol of the party, this R, <clears throat> and turn. So in example three, they win 10 consecutive weeks at 89. So, right? Yes, 10 consecutive weeks ending at 89. Okay. <clears throat> All right, so um, I have a, uh, let me see, is it, yeah, I have, <clears throat> oh, sorry, let me grab my lambdas. Um, bring it in here, just so you don't have to watch me do everything slowly. And we'll get rid of that. <clears throat> so I have a lambda that is just give me the previous value from an array. So there is no previous for the first one. Then here the previous one is three. Here the previous one is three. And so I can use that to figure out, are we on a run? Uh, so we'll say previous of array equal to array. Uh, that gives me trues and falses. I can wrap that in a minus minus. Uh, so that gives me a one whenever we are continuing on a run. And then if I scan zero and that and lambda a v a times v plus one, uh, that will give me my runs. So this is saying if, uh, if the current value matches the previous one, then v is one, then I want to keep the previous value. So in other words, take the previous value and zero it out if I'm starting a new run, but keep it if I'm on an, the old run and then add one. So I'll either reset back to one or I'll add one to where I was before. So that gives me my run. So let's let runs be all that nonsense. Uh, I'm interested in uh, X lookup. 101 is just some number that will always be bigger than all of them in runs. Uh, returning from here, and that's going to give me, oh, sorry, exact match or next smaller item. Oh, sorry, wrong place. That has to be inside here. Uh, so that's saying that it's the, uh, it's a number three, in other words, a purple. So then, hang on, first things first, let's because I keep referencing this input array over and over again, and that's not great. So take that, put it up there, and then we'll replace all the references to that with this. Okay, uh, so then we're gonna index this lock by that X lookup, and that should give me the R. So in other words, I match 101 against the runs, that matches against the biggest number which is the 10 that will happen right here at number 89 at the end of the run of 10. Uh, that tells me it's color number three, which 
the index tells me is R, uh, and then I want that and dash and uh, X match. 101 is the same logic. I want to match a bigger number against runs. Uh, match mode, exact matcher, next smaller item. And that works. So we'll cut that and put it up here. Ooh, I'm already halfway through the time. I don't think I'm halfway through the questions. So let's speed up, I guess. <laughs> All right, so the social network. For this level, we have to consult the social network. Sure. Mm. The, 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 the support sheet uh, shows the relationships fictional between our participants. Oh, are these... I guess these are all FMWC Brazil. Oh yeah, I recognize some names here. <laughs> Love it. Uh, I noticed also we've got the, the original social network was like close friends and friends, but this is uh, close friends or best friends and haters. Like that little twist. Anyway, uh, okay, our objective is to figure out the size of the second... Oh yeah, remember, this is like the second layer of the onion. So like these are your direct friends and these are their friends and we want to figure out how many friends are in the second layer okay so let's start by mm, filter uh, we're going to filter these names uh where x look up the name we're given which i'll come back and grab in a minute in here lock returning from here all right, making weird noises, uh, returning from there, uh, where that is not equal to blank. So where there's anything populated. Uh, let's grab the name, it's G151. Okay, so that gives me three direct friends, which I think is what I was expecting. Uh, Daniel Gonzalez, Bruno Romero, and Clever Kotki Quiti. There. Okay. So this is let layer one be all that stuff. Then for layer two, well, let's just return layer one for a second. Oops, sorry, I've done that. Uh, okay. So for layer two, I'm going to want to say if any of the three columns corresponding to those three friends contain something, then give me that. So. Uh, so layer two is going to be filter. I'm going to start off by getting layer two, including layer one and the original friend themselves and whatever. Uh, so I'm going to filter that where I want a by row of filter. So I'm going to filter the columns across to just the three I'm interested in, and then I'm going to do a by row to concatenate those and figure out if there's any connection. If that makes sense. So we're going to filter uh, the main grid lock where uh, is number x match this against layer one. Uh, that closes the is number, that closes the filter. And then, so we're going to do by row that, and we're going to concat. So we're going to concat those, and that means if any of those is equal to um, to thingy, if any of those is is not blank, then the concatenation will not be blank. So we're going to filter where by row is not equal to that. And then let's return layer two. And that gives me a bunch of people, 16 people. I'm looking for the answer of 13, but that's probably because this includes, well, it definitely includes the original person themselves, and then it probably includes some of their, you know, if Bruno and Daniel are friends, then Bruno and Daniel will both be included in this list when they shouldn't be. So you could do some stuff with filters, but one relatively easy way to get rid of this is to say unique of layer of uh, VStack. So I'm going to stack layer two together with layer one twice and uh, and the original name. I could do the original name twice, but I know the original name will always be in layer two because you go out to your friend and then back to yourself. Uh, but whatever, let's do the, the original name two twice. Uh, so what you get here is a list 
that contains layer one, layer two, and the original name, and it guarant is guaranteed to repeat everything that comes up in layer one and the original name. And then you just want to take the unique values that occur exactly once. And that, sure enough, is 13 people. And then we just want rows of that. Okay, next question. Oh man, it's still loads to go. All right. For this level, we're interested in sheet five, Lana Banana. Lana is a, I remember thinking the other day when I looked at this first, this said machine, but of course it must mean monkey, uh, just somewhat similar word, uh, that always moves to the right, has three movements. So yeah, I remember, so you can go right and up, right only, right and down, okay. Uh, blah, 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 blah. For every one of the questions, Lana starts her journey in a, in a in the indicated position and moves along. So we've got a starting position and a list of movements. Okay, that's fine. Uh, our objective is to discover in which cell, cell ref, relative reference without dollars, Lana is going to collect. The nth, oh yeah, it's like the nth banana. Fine. Synapus, the initial position. Oh, so sorry. Say as if if the initial position has a banana, uh, that should be counted. Okay. So uh, let's do this. Let's let uh, R be mid this sequence land of this one turn R so that's just all my arrows split out uh, then my uh, my UD my up down shift is going to be uh, X match R against uh, this so then, yeah, minus two, I think. Return UD. Uh, no, let's return both. Let's return H stack AR D. So, yes, go up one, go along. Good idea. Okay, good. So then, uh, my rows will be scan. From the starting row, which will be row of indirect of this. So we start in row 19. Uh, start from there, move by UD and sum. And we have rows. So I start off in 19, then I go up to 18, up to 17, up to 16, up to 15, and then along and then along. Yep, okay, that seems to be working. Uh, and then my calls will be. Uh, sequence uh, of uh, len of this, this many moves uh, starting from column of indirect of this. And let's just return CLS. Starting in four, no, it's got to start in that plus one. I want to start with the next move. Okay, so then my vowels can be index, a lot of banana, lock by rows and calls. And let's return vowels, take a quick look. Okay, so we got, sometimes we got bananas, sometimes we don't. Uh, but then I also need to include the starting value. So, well, so I guess first let's just do this. Do minus minus this not equal to blank. And now I've just got ones. Okay, so then uh, my num bananas is going to be scan 
from let's start from uh, I just want to figure out if the starting point is zero so indirect oh, I should have just shortened the sheet name but never mind n5 lana banana uh, close single quote exclamation mark close double quote that and this so one times that not equal to blank. So in other words, if it starts off on a, sorry, one times, yes. So if it starts off on a banana, that'll be one as the starting point, otherwise it'll be zero, uh, and then vowels, and then sum. And then, give me numban. There we get one, and then at some point, eventually two, and then three, and then four. Okay. And finally, oh shoot, no, I wanted an address. Damn. Uh, okay, so we're going to xlookup, uh, no, sorry, we're going to xmatch uh, this against numban. That gives me 28. And then uh, I guess call that turn. So then my final answer is going to be the address, and that's going to be address of row number is going to be index uh, of turn and index of call CLS turn and four to give me no dollar signs. Yeah, 14 seems to be working. Boom. All right, so I'm going to run out of time before I finish this, but oof, this is, well, it's a tall order for a half an hour, but also I know that the top score in this round was uh, was not that high. So I don't feel too bad about that. Okay, so this one's based on Dicey Battle, but I think, as far as I remember, rather simpler. So in this level, we have six data. We don't have six dice. I remember that because there are four dice. So I don't, I don't know. Level, we will have six dice. No. Okay, so maybe that's just a typo. I'm pretty sure there are four dice, but whatever. Uh, the objective is to find biggest points possible between the dice. Dice with, I remember, impar and par are odd and even. Uh, so the dice with odd values have their values tripled. The dice with even values have their values doubled. Okay, so hang on, one thing at a time. Uh, first, let's do mid this sequence. Is it always four? Yes, it is. So sequence four. We'll do fine. One. Uh, now, uh, let's just do a unique of left of this. Will hopefully give me everything it does and just sort it. So that's my list of dice, which is a handy thing to have as a reference. I would use my lambdas, but I'm trying to be I'm trying to do things that are e easier for other people to reproduce. So let's we'll match that against this. That gives me my numbers. Okay, so then let nums be all that stuff. Uh, then vowels is going to be nums times 2 plus, so if it's odd, it's tripled, so we're going to say 2 plus is odd, nums. Uh, and then let's h stack for now, nums and vowels. Got one minute left, let's see if I can get this finished. Oh, I hate when it autocorrects and gets rid of my nice spaces. Okay. So 4 is double to 8, 2 is double to 4, 3 is triple to 9, 5 is triple to 15. Okay, and then we have to sum one even dice and one odd dice. If we don't have, if we don't have any even dice, use two odd dice. If we don't have any odd dice, use two even dice. Okay. So, uh, I guess my let's say best odd uh, will be max if is odd nums 
and vowels go to zero and best even uh, will be the max of if is odd is even sorry uh, nums then vowels otherwise zero and then if either of those is, is zero that means there are they're all of the same parity in which case I just want the best two so we're going to say if best odd times best even equals zero then I want sum of large vowels one two I have two values, otherwise I want best odd plus best even. Uh, that seems to match. I don't know. I, my timer is showing 31 minutes. Maybe, maybe I did one minute of chatting at the start, although I also skipped over a lot of reading at the start because I had looked at this case before, so I'm pretty sure I did not get the last two levels at um, well, it's, I'm okay with that. Anyway, okay, uh, in this level, we're going to lead our, we're going to lead with cryptography. That might be a mistranslation. Every word presented was cryptographied, encrypted, I guess, uh, and resulted in a and came out in a cycle of letters, I don't know. Uh, so considering the letters A to Z or Z, the words have their letters dislocated, shifted X units in front. Send open for the first shift equal to the first shift equal to the number of letters in the given word. Okay, hang on, example. In the example PSI, it has three letters. So the first letter was shifted three letters to the front. So from P, we're going to go back three. And NOP, yes, fine. And then for S, yes, yeah, so for the second letter, we're going to go back four steps. And for the last one, we're going to go back five steps. Okay. So let's start with mid of this sequence len of this uh, one uh, this is my input my letters so then i want my shift from a so uh, if you don't know you can use code to figure out the ascii code of a character uh, and it's helpful to know that the ASCII code of an uppercase A is 65. We're only dealing with uppercase here, so we don't have to think about upper and lowercase. So here I'm going to want code of this minus 65, which is how many letters is it offset from A. Uh, then I shift is probably not the word for that, but anyway, uh, we'll call it index. Uh, then the shift that I need to apply is sequence. Mm. So the number of steps in it is going to be that, and the starting one is also going to be that. And then I guess I might need a minus on this. So new end, new end x will be this plus this. Now in this case, they all just kind of land nicely, but uh, we'll do mod. The reason that I shifted it to how far are they from A was so that I could do mod 26 uh, because if I started off with whatever this one was 80 uh, then take the shift and if it takes it outside the range from 65 to 90 which is letters then you need to mod to get it back in the range and it's, it's just easier to do that with an offset so anyway that's new index and then finally output which is going to be concat uh, of car car reverses code so uh, car of this plus 65. That gives me mod. Good. So now let's roll this all up into a let. So let, call it letters, be that stuff. Mm. Oops. Only one equals, please. Mm. Codes. Be this of letters. Q 
shift can be this of no, we don't even need to refer to the earlier variables for that one. Uh, uind can be mod of uh, codes. I labeled it index here, but then I named it codes. Silly, but anyway. Uh, plus shft mod 26. And then, as you can see, now that I've decided I'm over my time anyway, I'm just uh, atoning for my earlier mashing it all together by being a little more systematic uh, in laying it out as a let. You could also just data table it, but when there's only a few steps like this, it's easy enough to smash it all into a formula, and then you don't have to data table. And that's, I think that's it. Did I, did I get to the end? Yes. Let's see. Yes, that's everything. All right. So yeah, that uh, that was definitely a stretch goal <laughs> for a half hour. Uh, maybe if it was in English, I would have got it done in half an hour. Although honestly, I probably not quite. Uh, but it was a fun case, uh, and and brought back at least for me memories of lots of other fun cases. So I like that. Um, and the uh, the finals. So the, I guess, two semifinals and a final, uh, so many more cases coming, uh, of the FMWC Brazil are happening later this month. There are also uh, three new cases uh, coming out this week from the finals of the FMWC South Africa that happened last weekend as well. So I'm going to be doing videos of those soon. Uh, yeah, lots going on at the moment. Uh, that's all I got for today. Thanks for watching. See you next time.